Hi, this is Jenny Walker and welcome to Closet Conversations. Before I get started on this uh, episode, I want to tell you that I'm really, really excited that my podcast has finally had enough uh, rankings and customer ratings to show up on the consumer rating section. And I found out a few days ago, I was walking in Santa Monica with a friend of mine um, and we were wandering around on Sunday and we wandered into the Apple store and I'm like, let me show you my podcast. I'm really excited. And I pulled it up and I clicked on customer ratings and there it was, the five stars. And I'm not sure how many people it takes to for the ratings to show up, obviously a certain number, maybe 10 or whatever, but someone left their first customer review and I want to read it for you because it just really made my day and it says love to listen five stars by easy e 8585 on august 23rd 2018 it says you're my motivation i'd love to make selling and reselling into my full-time job listening to you makes me feel like it may be possible one day keep the podcast coming and i gotta tell you that one review um with the comment just totally had me skipping out of the apple store and it's amazing how that kind of feedback can keep you going. So I just want to say thank you to everyone who has been listening and to the people who've left uh, ratings. And for that first comment, if you have other comments, I'd love to hear them. Uh, obviously, positive comments are great. Um, <laughs> that's what keeps me going. But if there are things you want me to improve on, please be sure and leave that as well. But I'd love to hear from you. I can't believe um, that this finally happened. And... I'd been checking nonstop, and then when I quit checking, sure enough, you know, I mean, that's that's a number of, that's like a good week, a week and a half between when then that comment was left and when I, when I saw it. So I just really appreciate that, and I appreciate you who are listening, and I just want to tell you that. So, so thank you. So today I want to talk about Poshmark versus eBay. I've been an eBay seller since 2003. I've been a Poshmark seller actively on the app for about eight months. Um, I started, I think, either earlier this year, um, really doing something with it, or maybe late last year. And I got to tell you that I've spent enough time now on Poshmark to really get a feel for the app and, you know, give you my thoughts about it. Now, the one thing I want to say, first of all, is this, this comparison is about being multi-platform number one. And what I did was I'd been consistent on eBay uh, in terms of, of listing, and I just sort of was playing around with putting things up on Poshmark. I just did a hanger on the back of my door in the, the early parts of putting inventory there. And over time now, there are uh, 477 active listings now in my closet out of a total of 542 listings, which means I've sold um, 100 and some odd pieces, somebody want to subtract that, a hundred and something pieces, um, well actually it says 62, is that possible, only 62, anyway, I've sold a certain number of pieces, and so 477 available out of 542 listings total, uh, followers, uh, 46,667 as of this moment, uh, 4.9 rating on there on average, and one day shipping. So I finally, I think I feel like with almost 500 listings over, you know, six or eight months, I have a feel for what's happening on there. Um, first of all, number one, my things are too expensive. And that is just flat out because the people who, um, uh, who've been buying from me are, you know, only in a couple of instances have they purchased it right out without making an offer. Um, I feel like the offer system on Poshmark, it certainly works, but there's really no way to gauge if someone's going to counter. And I really felt like on Poshmark, people would be countering more than they are. I mean, there's a number of times where people have made offers and did not counter uh, when I got back to them. And I'm not sure why that is. And it'd be really interesting if you know, if there was a way for someone to basically say, this is a one-time offer. In other words, I'm not even, I'm not even going to be flexible with you, but you never know. I mean, it's a guessing game. So there's been a number of things I have not taken offers on 
um, that um, in hindsight I wish I had simply because as I thought about it, you know, the thing that strikes me more than anything is there is so much out there that if anybody shows any interest in anything, you got to really find a way to sell it to them because the choices are just, you know, unlimited out there. And there's so many, comp there's so much competition now um, that it's kind of mind boggling. And yet people still are buying from each other. So it goes to show that you can be a player in this very, very crowded field. And you've got to find a way to differentiate yourself and to stand out. Um, but in terms of Poshmark and how it actually functions, you know, there's there are a lot of positives and there's some real obvious negatives to me. And I want to talk about the positives first. Um, one of the things I like is that people go into it knowing that it's a final sale um, on eBay. I mean, I'm offering 30-day returns, and so I'm always wondering if it's going to come back. I have very, very low return rate. Um, I don't have it in front of me, but it's like 5% maybe, um, 3 to 3 or 5%. And I think that's pretty terrific. Uh, most people, I think, want to keep what they're buying. And if they get a real bargain on it, it's another way to kind of help them make a decision about keeping it and not returning it. Um, but anyway, on Poshmark, they go into it with the idea that they're not going to return, which I like. But they still can return if there's a problem with it, with it which I understand um, but do not like the way that works. And I'll get into that later. But what I do like is the fact that, you know, it is a final sale. Uh, when you get paid, that's it. You don't have to worry about it, you know, having to give that money back if someone changes their mind. I really think that's terrific. I love the fact that Poshmark takes out their fees on the front end and you don't have a bill coming later like you do with eBay um, that you have to pay. It's super clean. They take their fee before you ever get your money. I absolutely adore that. It's basically clean. Clean as a whistle. When you get that money, it's free and clear. You don't have to worry about it or anything like that. Um, I like how easy it is to post something. It's the simplest thing in the world. And since there is an expectation that everyone is posting things very quickly and that you can ask questions later, it's sort of built on that. So I feel no need to put in all that extra information like I do on um, eBay. And I can just click, click, click. You have something up in, in, you know, seconds, literally. And what I've been doing in my listings is saying, please ask for measurements to ensure fit. So I'm asking everyone to just ask me what the measurements are because I'm not going to put them in on the front end. And those measurements, I can get back to them so easily because the measurements are sitting on eBay. So whenever I get a question about measurements, I go to my eBay store called same name, Jimmy Girl's Closet. I pull up the item, cut and paste the measurements out, and drop that in to the Poshmark website and answer their question. So the ease of that is terrific. Um, you know, the fact that you can take the photos right off of your iPhone um, and use the app is super, super simple. I love that. And, um, and yeah, and I am selling things. And... I just think that's terrific. So to me, Poshmark is, it's, you know, it's, it's like Twitter, but instead of having something to say, we have something to sell. And, and I think it's interesting and, and I like it and um, I'm selling more and more on it. And my goal really right now, and it's basically the first week of September, is just to get as much inventory up as possible on Poshmark to try to even out the amount of inventory between both stores, my eBay and my Poshmark, so that when the big buying season comes, I'm ready. I'm ready because I have a ton up there. So I'll be ready for those buyers that are in that shopping mood to be putting offers in and, and buying that inventory. So that's my strategy right now. Just list, 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 list get those numbers up as much as possible and just prepare for the buying season. I'm also spending time trying to follow as many people as possible. There does not seem to be any sort of cap um, on the number of people you can follow. Um, I've seen, I mean, there are people who have, I think there's one woman I saw, she had 200,000 followers and she was following a million people. So that goes to show that you can follow and follow and follow and, um, and it doesn't seem to be a cap. There may be a cap, but I don't know what it is. So to me, it's just follow as many people as you can 
so that hopefully they'll follow you back and hopefully you have a broader group of people to know about your store and what you have available for sale. So that's my strategy. Follow as many people as possible, get those numbers up, get as many items up for sale as possible and just, you know, go, go as usual. Now in terms of my pricing, I have not figured that out yet. Um, for me, it's been mixed. It's been very mixed in terms of people buying at full price, people buying via offers to me first, initiating it, and people buying from offers I've sent to them. And I feel like most of my sales are people who are making me an offer first. They're not doing it from the offer for like or features. Now, that's probably because I'm not making a good enough offer. I tend to just do 10%. I tend to do the minimum. And I know that that's not very attractive to a lot of people. So um, I will be looking at making bigger offers. Um, but the thing to remember is I have two stores, two platforms, eBay and Poshmark. So trying to be consistent on the pricing in both places, but it's not perfect. It's not exact and it's something that I'm that I'm juggling. So anyway, those are some of the things I like about Poshmark. Um, and uh, the one sticky thing that they have not dealt with is the tax situation. Right now, uh, we are not collecting tax. Um, but if you're a professional seller, you may actually be needing to pay that tax even though you didn't collect it for people in your state. So that's the little sticky thing that they have got to deal with that um, right now, I know they've tried to deal with it from things I've read and um, listened to online. Um, they've tried to basically go, here, government, take this money, and they wouldn't do it. So because there's not a system that's set up well enough for them to be able to collect sales tax where needed across the country. So that's something I think they're working on. Um, but for now, that's not happening. So that's something that people aren't having to deal with. I deal with that all the time, though, on eBay. And on eBay... Um, as someone who has a registered business in the state of California, two of them actually, um, I'm required to collect sales tax for all of my sales in the state of California. So I get the lovely task of dealing with the Board of Equalization um, and making those um, quarterly reportings and paying that money back into the city uh, or the state or the city and state, uh, those taxes in. And that's a big responsibility. And for people who are professional sellers, we have to learn to deal with that. We have to uh, basically set that money aside in escrow and have it available to pay when it's due. And that's that's a big responsibility because if you don't um, do it correctly or, or spend that money elsewhere, then you kind of get in a mess. And so that's not what you want to do. You want to be clean with all of that. Um, in terms of eBay uh, versus Poshmark, one of the things I do absolutely prefer and adore eBay about is um, the way they handle returns and I don't know if I'm just lucky or if I just my love for the platform just permeates through to <laughs> through to problems but you know eBay I mean I've heard a lot of criticism of eBay and I mean nothing's perfect but I do not have the, the the negative feelings about eBay that so many people I've heard do. I absolutely adore this platform, and I've learned how to use it, and I've been using it for a long time, and I'm still learning every day what to do. I'm still not using every bell and whistle that's out there, but I love the platform. It's a game changer for my consignment shop. It's a wonder for my resale store. But what they do, which I really, really appreciate, is – they basically are on your side when there's a problem with the transaction. And really the problems, the I mean, the real issues when there's fraud or problems or issues with things on eBay selling, is, they're pretty much the same problems in the, when they pop up. One is someone wore it and mailed it back to you. I mean, it's a no-brainer. And so the way you protect yourself on eBay from that is they give you an opportunity to have 12 photos. And I think at some point they may even expand that. But you get 12 photos. And with 12 photos, you can really do a good job of covering inside and out of your item. And the whole point of that is to take it at every angle possible so that you're covered in case someone says, oh, well, this had a ding on it or this had this wrong with it or this had that wrong with it or whatever. And you can compare it to the photos and and be protected. So if something's been worn, 
what you do is, you know, in a return is you take, you know, there's a couple things you can do. One is someone says, oh, I bought this widget from you and it's broken or there's a problem with it. And what you do, and I've, every time there's a problem, I call eBay. But what I've learned to do is I say, okay, send me some photos. And what that does is it puts the onus on the person who received the item to send you pictures and to document what they see is wrong with it. And those photos are so important because that's what eBay is going to use to compare against your original photos to determine if there's any problems. So what you do is they send the photos and you look at that and you can always ask for additional photos. This is a beautiful thing. You can say, hey, you know, I can't, can you send it from this angle or send it from this angle? You know, I can't tell. So anyway, um, you've got those 12 original photos that you took for your item. Then you have the, any photo that they have of, of there's a problem. And the way it works with eBay is if it's been altered if from its original condition or if it's been worn or there's any damage, you do not have to take this back. So what happens is you have to wait. You have to wait a minute. So the person does the complaint. You say, you know, send me photos. They send you the photos. And you kind of look at that. And you, regardless of what you think, um, the trick here <laughs> is you got to ask them if they've worn it. This is absolutely the key to being protected in eBay. And I, they've told it to me many times. If the person tells you they've worn it or admits they've worn it or expresses that they've worn it or said they've tried it on and worn it and walked around in it, you're covered. Because as long as you can document that they said they wore it, that's all you need because it is no longer in the original condition. So um, many times when we've asked people, hey, you know, you're showing this, you know, problem, you know, did you, did you, you know, was that while you were trying it on or wearing it around or what happened? And, you know, more likely than not, they're going to say, well, yeah, you know, I was, you know, wearing it around the house or, you know, I wore it to a party or I did whatever. And then that's when it happened. So the fact that they say they wore it, you're covered. And that's a little unknown thing. And I've learned that because every time, and it hasn't been that often, but times when people have had problems with anything is I every single time I call eBay and I'm like okay they've had this problem what do you think I'm the seller you know what should I ask what should I do what kind of do I get photos you know is this enough if you were reviewing the case what would you say based on the information that you have and so I look at eBay as our friend our resource and people who've got our back now they also protect the buyer it's not to say that they don't but as a seller if you've got, you know, stellar feedback, you always get positive feedback. You know, if, if, you know, they can pretty much tell a lot about you uh, from your account, how long you've been with them, what kind of person you are um, in terms of your sales and your ratings. And they will, they'll look at all of that when they're making these decisions about um, problems with the sales. And the fact that they have your back is amazing because... On Poshmark, it isn't that way. And what I didn't like is I recently had experience with Poshmark, and this in no way um, makes me not want to use the app, just so you know. It's just it was the first time I had someone um, want to return something because it was not as described. And I was like, hmm, because, you know, I've been doing this a long time, so I'm working extra hard to make sure things are as I claim them to be, and that's part of the feedback that I get is people are really happy and most of the time um, they've been they're overly joyed when it's so much better than than what they thought it would be most because my pictures could be better and I'm working on that but um it's kind of funny but anyway um so yeah so I had this experience on Poshmark where someone bought something and had the dreaded they want to return it and I'm like uh so there was some little tear that they said was in it which is not in the photos, wasn't anything I saw. And and so I took the approach that I always had on eBay. And I didn't know better. <laughs> but I basically said, well, I don't remember sending out that way, but no problem, just send it back. We'll be happy to, you know, want you to be happy on Poshmark, which is what I always do on eBay, no big deal. But what I didn't expect was that the item would come back damaged and worn. So what had happened based on my opinion, this is my opinion, of course, is that the person um, 
damaged it while wearing it. And once I got it back, there was makeup inside. There was sweat stains. It was a bustier. There were sweat stains inside. And, you know, the fabric's all, like, wrinkly from wear. Like, just real obvious signs that someone had a party <laughs> or went to a party in my bustier. And I was really disappointed. I went, oh, my gosh. My first thought was, all right, be cool about it. You know, they're probably going to just got my back just like eBay does. So I'm not going to, and I didn't know, and I didn't call them ahead of time. And this is where I don't have that relationship with, with Poshmark, like I do with eBay, where I would just call up someone. I just assumed I was protected in the right, in the same way. What I learned was, um, Poshmark was not moved at all by the fact that I had photos of an obvious wear on this item. And their attitude was, well, we just don't know if that happened before or after, you know, so here's a $10 credit. So sorry. And I was like, seriously, you're going to give me a $10 credit on Poshmark. It's not even cash because you can't decide who's right or who's wrong. So I was like, I don't think so. So I wrote them again and I said, please re review this because I'm a professional seller and this is not, you know, how I sent it out. And there's all this obvious problems with it and they wrote back again so sorry you know we've already made our decision we're going to give you that little credit but you know we really can't tell who's at fault here and so like really I was like seriously and so I wrote him again <laughs> I said please review this one more time because I'm not satisfied and I said until I get $40 worth of credit on Poshmark I'm not going to be happy because I can't sell that thing um, in the same way or, you know, with it in that condition, it's probably just had to throw it out or something. But so that was my experience on Poshmark. And I was so stunned by it because number one, they only let you have eight photos. And that is something I know they went from four to eight, but they really got to go from eight to 12 because in 12 photos, you have an opportunity to capture more angles and more aspects of what you have for sale. And I think it's absolutely the right thing for everyone involved um, to be able to do that. I also believe you should be able to submit more images at the time of a complaint. You can only submit like three or four, and sometimes it takes more than that to cover the scope of what might be a problem with the item. So I believe that they need to add more images ability to do images and provide those at the time that there's a problem as well because that's going to really benefit everyone but certainly I feel like if I'd have had 12 images of my item they would have been able to see the inside was clean and pristine they would have been able to know that it came back in a different condition and quite honestly I'm not I'm not happy about it and it's on principle because it's not like I will miss anything with this item that I bought for the purpose of resale and you know but it's the point it's the point that um the way they're handling this return and this problem between what i sent and what i got back is just not satisfactory and i know um i know that um this will probably evolve over time and poshmark will come up with a way to be more fair with that and i think they're you know giving you a ten dollar credit is their you know, way of doing that. But, you know, um, this could have been a really expensive item and it wasn't. I still sold it for $40. I mean, what if it was a $400 item or the $1,200 boots that I sold? I mean, to me, this was a test on something that was lower priced with a really sad outcome. And so I think um, in the future, I'm going to have to be really mindful of the photos of those eight photos that I put up there being sure I'm getting every, every angle that's possible, even doubling things up if I have to, like, you know, trying, if I'm trying to show a sleeve and something else, maybe laying the sleeve over something, so show the brand tag and the sleeve in the same photo, whatever it takes, so that was something that I did not like about Poshmark, that I do like about eBay, because every single solitary time on eBay, we've been protected when there's these weird things that happen, um, you know, we're, they say it's not as described or, you know, that they've worn it. And uh, there's probably been one time that I got something back. Well, clearly, they had a party in it. And um, it was because our pictures did not show the areas of damage that the person claimed. 
And I think this is really interesting because it's up to you to provide the angles that are going to show the garment or the item for later. So you have to basically protect yourself on the front end for something that might happen on the back end. So lesson there. So yeah, those are just um, a few things that I, you know, Poshmark versus eBay. Now, eBay, I feel like um, when I'm in eBay, it has more of an Amazon feel in terms of, I feel like when I, when I'm selling on there that I, I'm a more professional seller. I'm dealing with taxes. I'm dealing with measurements. I'm dealing with shipping. I'm dealing with all of these things that have to be accounted for. And for some reason, I think, I feel like I'm being taken more seriously by the company. I'm being taken more seriously by the customer because I'm an eBay seller. And on Poshmark, I don't get that feeling at all. I don't think, to me, um, because you have a lot of uh, people just selling out of their closet, you're not dealing with the bulk of professional sellers that you are on eBay and, say, in Amazon. And I think over time that's going to change. I think over time more and more professional sellers are going to get on Poshmark. And so you're going to have this community that's really mixed, mixed with people who maybe have never done any selling before. Maybe they're not experienced and, you know, they're learning along with so many other people about how to do this app. And um, I think a lot of that can be seen in how people communicate with you, uh, the types of things they ask. Hey, do you want to trade? I mean, has somebody asked me to trade today for a Jean-Paul Gaultier dress. I'm like, seriously, you're going to want me to trade. I'm going to trade my Gaultier dress to you for something that may or may not ever show up. Be trading. Just have a trading site. I mean, Poshmark is a selling site, not a trading site. But um, someone asked me and I politely declined. But, you know, seriously, there's no trading going on on eBay. Nobody's asking you to trade anything. So, I mean, there's a lot of, um, I think, education that's got to take place um, on Poshmark and how people, you know, should be uh, conducting themselves in these business transactions. And I'm sure that's something that will get addressed over time as the app continues to grow and grow. And I feel like I have not been to a Posh Fest. I wish I could go this year. It's just impossible. I've got so much going on, on with my consignment shop. I can't get there, but I really, really wish I could. So just so you know, I wish I was there and I wish... I could go to go to that so that I could attend the training. But because of that, my, my ability not to be there and to be in that environment, I have to ask myself, well, how am I going to learn how to use this app? Because what Poshmark is sharing perhaps is not the same as where individual sellers are sharing information on YouTube, on social media, on you know podcasts like this one and so it's almost like these are people who are doing they're basically trainers and um, so you know Poshmark doesn't have to have a large training department because you have all these sellers doing the training for them doesn't mean it's the right training doesn't you know it's like a big mystery I mean when you ask people you know and you listen to them we're all basically scratching our heads saying how do we figure this out because there's nobody to tell us there's nobody educating us saying here's all the things you need to do on the app to be successful that where it's coming from Poshmark directly from them like training in the way you have all of these individual sellers all over YouTube um, you know talking and talking about what they've learned and how they learned I mean this is so interesting they had to figure out they had to learn they had to come up with ways and strategies to be successful on Poshmark which is so interesting that it's sort of like trial and error is the only way you can be successful and I just really reject that notion because you go to eBay and you know I can call the hotline at any time call the 800 number and ask about anything and they will sit there and walk you through it and you just don't have that level of support at Poshmark at this time in their evolution. And I hope that that's coming, but that's a really big deal. I mean, eBay has their own um, 
you know, events that they do once a year, the eBay Open. I was not able to go this year. Again, really swamped, but i um, hoping to go next year. Um, you know, but I feel like they do a much better job of training people on how to use their app. And in the end, I mean, or their, their website and app. So in the end, you are left to your own devices to learn how to be a good seller on eBay, how to be a good seller on Poshmark, just how to do business, period. You're really on your own because there are limits to what these companies are going to share with you. And I just feel like eBay, with all of the support that they have, has just been just stellar and outstanding uh, in training and walking you through and holding your hand and going through all of that with you. And as a result, I believe I'm a much better seller on eBay than I ever have been because I continue to learn more and more about what to do. And, um, and they, and they keep supporting that. And with Poshmark, you know, if I'm limited to what I've learned on my own, if I'm limited to what people on YouTube are saying, I'd say that's really narrow view and that there's going to be something missing. And I don't want to have to pay someone to train me on how to do Poshmark. So to me, that's a big gap. That's a big missing link in Poshmark's evolution is to have this support system, the training and the education and get people to walk you through and help you on what to do. And why they don't have that, I have no clue. And I think um, because they started out as one thing and they've evolved into something else, maybe that's why. Um, but I definitely don't see them getting at the level of an eBay without adding people to be focused on the training and without being upfront about how to be successful on the app. And, you know, if you can't be upfront about what is going to work, then you're not a selling app. You're a video game. You're a video game. You're a game that you're trying to play if people aren't going to be upfront with you about how to be successful on it. And that is something that I've realized um, lately in some of the differences. All that said, <laughs> again, I'm really enjoying Poshmark. So what I'm not enjoying is having to post between the two apps. And I know that that is not something that will always continue. I know that there are companies out there that are working to solve that uh, problem. Uh, there's a company that's coming out. And um, I'm going to be interviewing the, C the COO or the CEO on this podcast that's going to talk about a new and groundbreaking company that has technology that's going to solve the problem of creating listings and being able to post them on all of the different sites on a consistent way. So I'm not going to say who that is just yet until that's confirmed, but I do look forward to that. So, um, I think that's it. That's what I wanted to say today. How I feel about Poshmark versus eBay. They're both, um, working for me. Uh, they're both very different. Um, I did, just, I, I will add this one thing. I do like how easy the shipping is on Poshmark and not having to deal with it in the same way. That is a beautiful thing. That is such a beautiful thing that, um, you have a label for five pounds worth of merchandise and you're covered where with eBay, you know, if it's under a pound, maybe you're going first class, maybe you're not, you know, is it priority? Is it express? Is it two day? Is it ground? Is it whatever? And just the fact that you don't have to deal with the shipping costs either is a beautiful thing. Um, I just love that. And so I wish with eBay that they had a, a better way to handle shipping. And I wish that they would take their fees out at the point of when the transaction takes place. Um, there is something called uh, PayPal Working Capital. I have worked with them. I do work with them. I've successfully um, had a number of loans uh, paid off through them. Let me tell you what they do. The minute you have a sale on eBay or any sale through comes via PayPal or any kind of thing, they whatever you've agreed to in your loan um, they take that money out immediately. So if you're getting 100 bucks and you have a 20% repayment rate, $20 is going straight to PayPal Working Capital to pay back that loan. It is a game changer. 
But what I what I love about that is that they take the money immediately. There's no question about them getting their money. And just the way Poshmark takes the fees out. And the fact that eBay doesn't do that. I mean, you can push a button and send some money over to eBay. But seriously, their technology exists for them to be able to take their fee out right away. And they don't do it. Um, probably because of the different levels and layers of stores and do you have a listing fee and a this fee and a that fee? I mean, it's all this stuff, which is probably why they don't or can't figure out how to do it. But um, that, to me, is is a big negative, and it's a big positive on Poshmark. It just keeps things clean and rolling along. So this is Jenny Walker with my latest thoughts on eBay versus Poshmark on Closet Conversations. I want to keep talking about Poshmark because so many people – are asking me about it, and it's the highest rated uh, podcast that I have. Is anything with podcast is far outweighing um, the things on the consignment. So I think that just goes to show how many people are active on the app and looking for information that will be beneficial to them. So I'm going to be doing more on Poshmark because that just seems to be what people want to do. And back to Easy E eighty five eighty five, who said loves to listen. On August 23rd, 2018, saying, uh, you're my motivation. I love to make selling and reselling into my full-time job. Listening to you makes me feel it may be possible one day. Keep the podcast coming. Let me just answer to Easy e 8585 It is possible. I am working full-time um, in reselling and consignment. You absolutely can earn your living like this. You have to love it, though. I mean, if you don't love shopping and you don't love uh, the hunt, this is not going to be for you. But if you love that, you absolutely can, but you have to scale like anything else. You don't start out making a lot. You start out a little bit and you grow and incrementally. And the next logical step and the next logical step after that, you'll keep growing and um, before you know it, you'll be a top-rated seller on eBay or on Poshmark, and people will be seeking you out. You absolutely can do this full-time, but you have to start off part-time and start learning and just drinking up as much information as you can online, um, on YouTube, on podcasts, you know, just on social media, wherever you can find it, and to educate yourself is really, uh, really important. I have Made a ton of mistakes, <laughs> too many to list, but, um, you know, it's not about making a mistake. It's like, how quickly can you recover from it, and what do you learn from it, and how do you then change everything going forward so that, that um, the lesson isn't lost, you know, and so we keep evolving at Walker Vine Luxury Consignment. Um, as a matter of fact, a little tidbit. We were featured in the September-October 2018 edition of Pasadena Magazine on an article talking about luxury consignment. We were the, the only consignment shop in town that was mentioned. The other two were, uh, one was a buy-sell place and one was a, a uh, well, one was, uh, one, the other one was consignment, but it was um, men's um, tennis shoes and um, like hip-hop wear and things like that called Endeavored L.A., um, but we were the only luxury consignment shop doing what we do um, with women's clothing mentioned in that article. So we are just, just thrilled about that and love that the recognition's getting out there. So if you love what you heard today, please give it a thumbs, not a thumbs up, give it a five stars. I'm on the wrong platform. Give it five stars. I'd love for you to leave a comment that just really made my day. And, um, this will keep me going because I love talking about what I'm doing. There's so much I could talk about. Like it's like ad nauseum, as I say, I can talk about this subject. There's so many aspects of it and I'm trying to, um, piece it together the best I can in little, uh, tranches, big word for the day. And so that you'll, you can find some use out of it. Again, this is Jenny Walker with Closet Conversations until the next time.